I'm Yvonne Chan and this is Food for the Future, a Food Industry Asia program where we report on the innovations, insights and leadership in the food and beverage industry. Over three episodes, we will look at safe and sustainable innovation, consumer insights and in this episode, the all-important value chain that takes products from farm to plate and from lab to market. Increasingly, manufacturers and consumers are demanding products made from raw ingredients that are responsibly sourced environmentally and socially. And so it made sense for a global cocoa supplier, Cargill, to develop the Cocoa Promise program, creating a more sustainable and reliable supply chain while supporting growers and local communities. Reporter Ridwan Siriga reports from South Sulawesi, Indonesia. Cocoa, this is the raw material for chocolate, one of favorite food for many people. Most cocoa beans in Indonesia is produced by smallholder. Here in Sulawesi, Cargill Cocoa and Chocolate Company is running a sustainability program for cocoa farmers and its communities to help them achieve better living standards while growing cocoa sustainably. Cargill has been running the Cargill Cocoa Promise Program in Indonesia since 2012 to support the sustainable development of Indonesia's cocoa sector. Sulawesi, as a key cocoa growing region in the country, is the first location for the program, which has now provided good agricultural practices training to more than 25,000 Indonesian farmers, like Muhammad Aris in the Sopeng district. Hello, Faris Pagi. Yang jadi tantangan itu di petani, itu yang pertama sekali, kurang ilmu dalam melakukan budidaya kakao. Kemudian tantangan kedua, hama dan penyakitnya. Awalnya sebelum masuk program, bahwa kita menanam itu, ya, ya, ya. menanam asal-asalan, membibit asal-asalan. Setelah ada program, kita belajar semua. Mulai dari pembibitan sampai budidaya, bahkan dikawal sampai pemasaran. The Cargill Cocoa Promise program helps farmers like Mr. Aris take better care of their environment, implementing sustainable agricultural practices, as well as increasing productivity. Jadi kami percaya bahwa untuk meningkatkan uh, sektor kakao ini dapat uh, dilakukan dengan melakukan peningkatan tiga pilar. Yang pertama itu adalah terkait dengan peningkatan pendapatan komunitas petani. Yang kemudian yang kedua adalah pilar terkait dengan bagaimana meningkatkan uh, kapasitas petani yang mungkin mereka bisa dapatkan melalui kegiatan pendampingan dan pelatihan dari uh, staf lapangan. Kemudian yang ketiga adalah uh, landscape keberlanjutan lingkungan. The Cargill Cocoa Promise Program also involves traders as the next link in the cocoa supply chain. Importantly, the training includes cocoa sustainability certification from the Rainforest Alliance for Global Markets. Pelatihan yang diberikan oleh Kargil sangat penting buat saya untuk mengetahui mana yang lebih mana yang bukan biji sertifikasi dan mana yang biji sertifikasi. Kalau dulu eh, petaninya cuman beberapa orang yang datang setelah ada sertifikasi maka Petaninya sangat bertambah. Saya biasa e, membeli, menimban, terus memutuskan harga ke petani. E, terus Ibu Aji yang menginput. Another important factor in sustainability is product traceability in the supply chain. Coco Trace, Cargill's digital tracking application developed by their partner Coltifa, helps ensure that customers receive clear and transparent information about the provenance of the cocoa that they buy. Jadi uh, dengan adanya pelatihan-pelatihan yang diberikan oleh Kargil menambah ilmu kami sebagai pedagang biasa uh, mengikuti uh, era digital sekarang dengan disiapkannya atau ada semacam aplikasi yang disiapkan. Women's involvement is one of the key to success in sustainable program. So Kargil Cocoa Promise program also takes part in empowering women by providing them with more access to knowledge, innovation, and also partnerships. Kalau sebelumnya kan kita itu sebagai perempuan kan cukup di 
paling pem, karena manual cuma catatan cuma mengetahui e, modalnya berapa dikirim e, selisihnya berapa cuma itu kalau sekarang kan e, ada kesa, semacam kesetaraan lah customer dan konsumen kami di seluruh dunia pasti mereka memiliki permintaan dan spesifikasi yang berbeda beda, berbeda beda e, terkait dengan produk yang mereka beli misalnya bagaimana mutu dan kualitas barangnya produknya kemudian terkait e, bagaimana cita rasa keamanan pangan, dan paling penting adalah apakah produk yang mereka beli itu berasal dari proses uh, atau produk yang diperoleh dari kegiatan-kegiatan yang bertanggung jawab. The Cargill Cocoa Promise Program gives farmers and traders the knowledge and support they need to be truly sustainable, opening greater access to global markets, and ensuring a thriving cocoa sector for generations to come. A McKinsey Global Institute report puts Asia on track to top 50% of the world's global gross domestic product by 2040, driving 40% of the world's consumption. I am now joined by Matt Kovach, the CEO of Food Industry Asia. Matt, these McKinsey reports seem pretty dramatic. How can FIA help F&B manufacturers adjust to a rapid rate of growth, both sustainably and safely? Well, the, the opportunity is definitely in Asia with a really large consumer base. And I think how we will be helping companies is looking at how we can implement science-based regulations and policies to allow companies to bring new innovations to market much faster than they did in the past. I think there are going to be very demanding consumers across Asia in different pockets and different demographics. And we have to make sure that uh, regulations and policies are flexible and they allow more of a smart regulation approach to get those products to market sooner rather than later. And of course, we have to consider sort of the entire sort of um, uh, supply chain and how companies are, are being able to smooth out some of the challenging uh, issues that they have today and what might be in the future as well. Matt, you talk about the supply chain, the value chain, but the resilience of supply is also an issue. So how can we solve that? So we, we've had some pretty big challenges across supply chains over the last couple of years and, and in the immediate term right now. So what companies and governments will be looking at is how they sort of tweak or change that a bit. So rather than a just-in-time model, we'll be looking at a just-in-case model or a storage-based model where governments look at maybe uh, building inventory and companies might build their inventory a little bit more to smooth out some of the supply issues and around ports or, or with air freight as well. So the difference is that you might have to build up a little bit more inventory than you did in the past just so you could smooth out some of those problems. Hopefully that will also re reduce and mitigate food loss and waste. Um, but what we don't want is governments to resort to um, stockpiling and restricting exports to their markets. So we still need to have um, free and open trade so that, 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 that uh, consumers can get the products that they want in the countries. Thank you, Matt. We'll talk again in another episode. Singapore is a hub of research, development and innovation that has attracted startups and global corporations alike. What it needed was a place to manufacture and scale more sustainable alternatives to traditional meat proteins. So as June Lowe reports, global corporations Bula and Givaudan collaborated to form a one-stop shop for startups and companies to take that important next step in product development. Singapore, a food love is paradise. Among the country's national dish is the chicken rice, but that's a problem. Asia is facing the challenge of feeding 10 billion people by 2050. Meanwhile, the Singapore government's goal of producing 30% of the country's nutritional need would mean a seismic shift from traditional meat sources to alternative protein production. The issues with um, animal protein and that it simply won't be enough animal protein to feed the world and hence looking to plant protein. Consumers are a lot more knowledgeable at the moment um, in, in what they put into their bodies and I think they are a lot more aware of the different options up, out there in terms of uh, improving their diet. So this is, this is something that we see is really driving this industry. Singapore is a key research and innovation hub in the region, supporting the development of alternative protein. So this is a unique setup that we have, a collaboration between Jibidon and Bueller. Uh, it's designed to be a one-stop shop for companies and startups to come and develop their prototypes. The center provides a unique approach Welcome and expertise to, to co-create plant-based products that oh, meet consumers' that needs. Essential. Here, companies can take their products from idea to market, all in a couple of weeks or even days. 
starting with consumer understanding and concept development, to sourcing raw ingredients like soy and pea protein, to pre- and post-extrusion application of flavors, colors, and other ingredients, to cooking and tasting, and finally, scale-up and production, all under one roof. The collaboration of experts from renowned equipment manufacturer Bueller and a taste and well-being leader Jivodon accelerates innovation of plant-based products. We get to put the taste elements in at different stages through the process. So whether it's before it would go into an extrusion process, whether it's during the um, extrusion process, or whether it is after the extrusion process. Support from the centre helps lower the barrier to enter the market, especially for newcomers trying to enter the alternative protein category. One of the users is Australia-based OG Foods, a startup on a mission to design a sustainable food future, producing dairy and meat alternative products. It was exactly what we were looking for in terms of scale, uh, in terms of availability and, and capability. A pilot scale extruder that has the latest technologies attached uh, at that particular scale is uh, there's very, very few available here in the region. It's the best facility that I've seen in the region, um, and it's, it's uh, quite cost competitive, so uh, it was a no-brainer. Among the challenges of producing plant-based protein products is to bring food to the market that is not just tasty and nutritious, but to have a texture and taste that pleases the Asian palate. To overcome the challenges, the Protein Innovation Center, for example, uses state-of-the-art aeration technology, where nitrogen is injected into the extruder, creating microporous structures with high volume and low density. This allows for the flavorings to go through the entire product as opposed to just the surface of the product. The product is lighter, has a lot more layers, uh, and we see a huge advantage of using the aeration technology to create high moisture um, uh, extruded products. High moisture extrusion creates products that better mimic the structural qualities of meat. This would be key to improving the nutritional profile of plant-based meat and seafood. But it is not only texture that matters. Taste is equally important to keep consumers coming back for more. Givaudan is well known in the marketplace for its consumer sensory insights and we take those and we really help our customers transform those into their products. Innovation is happening fast in Asia and the alternative protein products make for great tasting meals for a sustainable and delicious food future. In our next two episodes, we'll see how the industry is gearing up to become more sustainable, more resilient, and using a mix of innovative new technologies to bring alternative protein products to market. And if you want to share and review any of the items you have seen, you can head to the foodindustry.asia website where you'll find further films and episodes. There's lots to keep up with in this vibrant and ever-changing industry. I'm Yvonne Chan. See you again soon.